This morning, major development in the search for 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham reported missing last week north of Houston. There's not words for it. Authorities have arrested 42-year-old Don Stephen McDougall on a separate assault charge, saying he's a person of interest in the search for Audrey. They say he's the roommate of Audrey's father and has an extensive criminal history, including a conviction for enticing a minor in 2008. We are hopeful that we can bring Audrey home alive, and that's what we are absolutely working for right now. But based on the evidence that we've got, we understand that foul play is a factor as well. Audrey's mother says her daughter was last seen around 7 a.m. last Thursday when she was supposed to catch her school bus, not far from the home she shares with her father. She was allegedly uh, dropped off um, at her bus stop. And later on, uh, we come to learn that she never even made it on the bus. Police are now searching for this 2003 Blue Chevy Suburban, saying it belongs to McDougal. Investigators also found Audrey's backpack near a local dam and say other items were found, but they're not elaborating. You're broken. You're you're mad. You uh, you lost. You're empty. And right now, I I'm empty. Despite his prior conviction for enticing a minor, our Houston station KTRK says Don Stephen McDougal was not required to register as a sex offender. A seven thousand dollar reward is offered for information on Audrey's whereabouts. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Uh, Stephen McDougal, Don McDougal, well, get him out to get rain. See, come on, JP wants to talk to you. Would you call? Hold on. <laughs> we'll put you in the for that. Well, come on out here. Well, no, 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 man. Come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. All right, well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on. Come on. See, come on. Let him around you real quick. Come on. Huh? Well, you got to get up and sign some paperwork. Come on. Come on. Wrap up for me. Appreciate you. video shows just how much disrespect he has for the justice system, for the police. He was more bothered that he was woken up. What? Are you serious? You just, you're being charged on the murder of Audrey Cunningham and you're more bothered about being woken up. A heartbreaking update we learned this afternoon. Like you mentioned, detectives said that Audrey's body was found in the Trinity River in Green Hill 59, not far from that bridge where we saw a lot of the focus around that surge this afternoon. We also learned that the person of interest, Stephen McDougall, he is now considered a suspect. And the Polk County DA says they've issued search warrants for him and they will be charging him with capital murder. Now he is already in jail on an unrelated aggravated assault charge that happened back in August. So they've had him in jail this whole entire time. They've had a lot that went into this search over the past few days when that Amber Alert was issued on Thursday. Polk County Sheriff went or talked about what all went into this. What led them to Audrey's body? Take a listen to see what evidence they collected over the past few days that helped them in the search. Based 
of all the evidence that law enforcement has collected. They are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougal. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. He is currently still in jail under an unrelated felony charge here. Now, based on that evidence that they collected, the sheriff says they were able to get that warrant. They said that they had enough evidence that they believe he could be convicted for capital murder. They said the evidence that they found over the past few days includes McDougal's cell phone and videos that, that witnesses sent in over the past few days. Um, they said that they were able to collect some information from McDougal over the past time. But again, he had been hot and cold over the past few days, giving them information about where Audrey could be. Now, they wouldn't give much information about how they found Audrey or the condition of her body. Um, they said that her body will be transported to the medical examiner, who will then determine the cause of death. But a tragic situation. A lot went into this search over the past several days. We saw agencies from all over the area coming together, searching the Trinity River by boat, by land, looking for any trace of Audrey that they could find. Just a tragic outcome that happened here this afternoon. This all started on Thursday when investigators say that Audrey was supposed to get on the school bus that morning, but she never showed up. McDougal was the person that was to make sure that she got on that bus that morning, but she didn't. They said that he typically walks her to the bus. That's something that he regularly does. We also learned that he is close with her family and lives in a camper behind their home here in Livingston. Just a tragic situation as to why why this would happen. The motive, that's still unclear. There is still a lot of information that we are working to get answered at this time. But at this point, we know that this criminal investigation, this murder investigation, it's just about to start now that they have that search warrant and Audrey's body has been found. But again, we are staying on top of this case and we will continue to keep you updated as soon as we learn more. Reporting live from Polk County, Corley P. KPRC 2 News. And Carly, while we have you here live, we did hear the Polk County Sheriff really thank the number of agencies involved in this search and also the public. They put out that appeal yesterday for folks to send in any video evidence they might have. And he did say that they have collected substantial evidence that will go towards this case. That's right. I mean, the amount of help from the community has been unreal. We've been out here the past few days you know, during this search, seeing those crews, but we've also seen a large amount of volunteers that have taken time out of their day just looking for any trace of Audrey, trying to help as much as they could. We also obtained video from witnesses that showed McDougal on Friday outside some stores in Livingston talking to some police officers before he was officially arrested. So everybody's been on their toes. Everybody's been paying attention, sending in as many videos, checking their surveillance cameras that they saw his car, saw him in the area at any point in time between Thursday and Friday, really helping piece together that timeline, which ultimately helped detectives lead them to Audrey today. Still not the news that any of us wanted to hear. Our hearts very heavy having to report this. Thank you so much, Corley. As I said before, if he had been arrested on that first charge, instead of it being dropped down to a misdemeanor where he didn't even have to go on the sex offenders list, he'd have been in prison. Here is a young girl talking about that incident. Also tonight, we're taking a deeper look at the suspect's past. A woman who was targeted by McDougal and as a child, is bravely coming forward to share her story tonight. She is one of several people who police say experienced violence from McDougal. ABC 13 anchor Lisa Rivas is live to walk us through the timeline here. Lisa. Charlie, Eric, there are so many layers to this story, starting with the case prosecutors are building now. And it's hard to fathom that Don Stephen McDougal was a family friend, a person even trusted to live in a camper behind the home Audrey shared with her father's side of the family. Despite his disturbing history, court documents don't get into what Audrey had to endure in her final moments, but they include this haunting detail. Her body was found in the water, weighted down with a rock. The rope he allegedly used was also said to be found in his SUV. 
McDougall's criminal history goes back more than two decades. Just last summer, police say he stabbed a man he did not know who was helping him jump a car battery. And tonight we are hearing also from one of McDougall's old co-workers who says McDougall attacked him when he threw him out of his home 14 years ago. I opened the door up and told him he needed to leave and he come at me with a knife and I had my shotgun and I hit him in the face with it and shut the door on him. I had no idea he was that kind of person. McDougall was reportedly sentenced to four years in prison for that incident. Long before the violent attacks against adults, McDougall also pleaded guilty to enticing a child in Brazoria County back in 2007. The young victim told police he crawled into bed with her and tried to remove her pants. He did not have to register as a sex offender as part of the plea. The victim is in her 20s now, and Audrey's murder is hitting her hard. ABC 13's Luke Jones is the only reporter to talk with her about this and is live now with her story, Luke. And you know, at least she says what happened to Audrey could have easily happened to her. I mean, total shock when she saw Don McDougall's face pop up in online posts. And tonight she says she wants to be Audrey's voice and a voice for other children in similar situations. I'll never forget his face after that. Carissa Davis would like nothing more than to forget Don McDougall's face. I know he's a nasty man. And what he did to her one night in 2007 when she was 10 years old. She was at her uncle's Brazoria County house for a family gathering. McDougall's sisters were family friends. And he came into the room that me and my cousin were sleeping in. Davis says McDougall yanked her cousin from their bed, then got into bed with her. Tried to take down my pants and... I immediately jumped up at that moment. I remember looking at him and saying, do you know how old I am? Davis raced for the door with McDougal in tow. He grabbed me, and when he did, I, I just swung my arm and I hit him. But now that he's been charged with Audrey Cunningham's murder, she can't help but wonder what would have happened had she not been able to fight back. And everybody was still asleep. I mean, my uncle's backyard was woods. I mean, it could have been me. McDougal pleaded guilty to enticing a child and was sentenced to two years in prison, but got a credit for almost one and a half years served. Notably, he wasn't required to register as a sex offender and went on to face numerous other charges. I think Brazoria County definitely uh, failed me and failed Audrey and possibly more. So by now, we all know Audrey Cunningham was sadly unalived by a sick individual where if the police had done their job she'd be alive if her grandparents had done a background check and just seeing his record just seeing his prison record and the enticement to of a child record charge and all that that you just done that little check and you can do that easily by going online and checking it right how do you think us youtubers get a lot of information we go online and we go on to certain places and check this information if they had just spent a few minutes, five minutes or more or so, and done a check, they had to see how nasty, how violent this guy is. Now, I haven't been able to find any other updates on this case, but as soon as I do get any updates, I will come on and let you all know. So... Sorry about that. So, please subscribe if you're interested in true crime with no drama. Just the facts and my opinions and even your views and opinions if you join me on the lives. If, you, if you're into all that, please subscribe. That way you'll be kept updated with all videos that go out, all my lives that go out, everything. So, 
Until then, have a good day. Stay safe.